to our channel welcome back to the bigs today as you can all see my special guest and you know what this video is literally for all my law students all my law peeps everybody that's been dming me about the cv the interview skills so today i'm here with Bhutali. Bhutali is a grad recruitment manager manager at bowman's and she's literally the person that you want to you know, like she's the person that decides whether or not you make it for back. So today I've literally procured Uzbutale because hey guys, your questions are hard and I don't know how to answer them anymore. So I'm getting somebody that knows how to answer them because she deals with it every single day. Before we even get to the questions, Uzbutale, before we introduce it. So hey guys, my name is Bhutali Paile and as Cydia said, Grad Recruitment Manager here at Bowman's. So, been here for the past six years, uh, been recruiting, developing all of our candidate attorneys that come through the law firm. So, really excited to be here so that I can give you guys some tips on what it takes to make it, what are some of the things that we are looking for. So, yeah, hope this is very useful to all of you. I, I definitely think it will be useful because literally she's been our pillar for the past three years at Bowman's, guys. This is the person that is just like, I don't know which rotation to pick. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to be retained. So guys, honestly, like this is literally, I think the cream de la creme of recruitment if you want to be an attorney. And I'm not just saying that, and you know I'm not just saying that. So I'm going to get straight into the questions. And I even wrote them down because as you can see, <laughs> hey guys, your questions are tough. <laughs> Listen, the first question that I always get mm. before people even ask me about interview questions mm. about uh, preparing for articles, anything like that, I always get the question, how must your CV actually be? What, when you look at a CV and you're like, hmm, this is nice, mm -hmm. what are you looking for? What are you picking up in that CV that says, this CV, this cover letter, this motivational letter is the one? Mm. So I think first things first, mm -hmm. when I look at a CV, the first thing for me is how it's organized, okay. right? Okay. So the way that it looks for me is very important in the sense that I typically like the ones that have a picture in the corner. Okay. So ah. you do have a picture in the corner, yeah. you've got your name written out nicely, mm. but also there's order in the way that you've put together your CV. So mm. if you're going to start off with your education, you ask, you start with the most recent education. So mm. if you are doing an undergrad and now you're doing a postgrad, you start with your postgrad, you're very clear about when you started, when you're going to be graduating, mm. what it is that you are majoring in, then you go on to what the undergrad was. Mm. Make sure your university is there and it's clear, the dates are clear. And then secondly, another thing that adds for me on the CV is, you know, there's, there's always an opportunity to put a little bit of your summary or overview about yourself. Mm. Um, and in that, not putting a long paragraph, right? So you do kind of two, three four sentences really mm -hmm. just outlining um, who you are, what you're studying, why you're passionate about it, and why you've applied to the law firm that you've applied mm -hmm. to. So that is very important. And be sure that every time that you do that section, you've checked it, right? We've seen so many students sent through that and they're saying, oh, I'd like to apply for this particular law firm and they've sent it to the wrong law firm. So attention to detail. Oh, it's so awkward. <laughs> very awkward. Yeah. Because then I respond and say, well, I think you're at the wrong law firm. I think you sent it to the wrong law firm. Please check it again. Yeah. Make sure. So guys, like attention to detail is mm. so important when you're putting it together. Make sure that you're customizing it for where you are applying to, mm. right? Mm. So that it shows where you've put that little bit of effort in. Um, but also once you have the experience section, I know sometimes it's very hard for students to have yeah. experience. But there's so much you can do at university, yeah. right? So what yeah. are some of the extracurricular activities that you've done? What are some of the things that you've involved yourself in? Even if you've had a part-time job outside of university, mm. those things are still important to put in because it shows how you're able to juggle between your academics, you're able to juggle and do other things that mm. are maybe also building some other skills like leadership ability, ability to work in teams. So that for me... If I can see that you've done a couple of things, and it has to be things you love, yeah, right? So don't yeah. just do stuff for the sake of filling it into your CV. Mm, it mm. has to be stuff that if I ask you, why have you done this? You need you to be able respond. to give me a reason why yes. you've done it. Um, so for me, it needs to be neat. It needs to be ordered. Um, the attention to detail is important. Mm. Your grammar, your spelling. Mm. Uh, because once you kind of start reading through a CV and you start seeing spelling errors and grammatical, you can't, just it, like, it just it puts you off a yeah. bit and takes you a bit aback. Mm. Um, so those are some of 
the key things yeah. that from a CV perspective, that's what makes it look attractive. Mm. Um, it's difficult sometimes if all we see is that you've studied. Like, okay, that's great. And like, that's there's a hundred other people that have studied. What that's are you the doing? Thing. That's yeah. the thing. There's a hundred other people that have studied. And so there can't be a reason that while well, I'm studying all the time, I'm like, that's great. Mm. I've seen hundreds of other people that are also studying and doing other things. Mm. So doing at least one or two extracurricular things. Yeah is important to put on your CV as well. I think one thing that I pick up from what you're saying is that the experience, I always thought experience meant work. Like, mm. I worked at this place for mm. six months. Mm. Kante doesn't necessarily have to relate to that. It can be extracurricular activities. And I never knew, okay, in my CV, I didn't include that, so that's awkward. <laughs> but anyway, I made it to promise that matters. <laughs> but now that you know, everybody, now that you know, you can do that. <laughs> Another important question that I always get is, mm. um, and I think I usually get this one from uh, like fourth year students mm. that are just about to finish and they say, can I still apply for articles? Mm. And I'm like, for lady. It's, it's like, and I'm just like, I got signed three years before oh I was even yeah, due to graduate, you know, yeah. and I always say, you need to apply as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the question that I want to confirm with you is, mm -hmm. when are people supposed to apply? Like, what is the best time? Best time to apply, if you're doing a straight LLB in your second year, mm -hmm. that's when you start applying. Uh, but if you're doing an undergrad in like a BCom or a BA, yeah. maybe around your third year, because by then you started doing a few more law courses and you actually mm -hmm. know... Um, a little bit about law. Yeah. So those are the best times, guys. If you're waiting until the penultimate year to start applying, it is so late. Like mm. already as it is, we we're opening applications for 2024 just now. Um. So yes. and we fall for the next two years. Guys. So, please, you you need to make sure that you're applying early. And another thing that's mm. important, um, part of that experience, part of your CV. Go to VAT programs, like apply for different VAT programs, apply for different work opportunities, even if it is like a one week something, a two week something, mm. those things are important and that you can put in your experience section as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, definitely. And that's actually the, the, what's going to be the third question about VAT like, mm. programs and when do you start applying, when, and what do you, when you're saying you're looking for VAC students, are you looking for, what are you looking for? Like what kind of a student are you looking for that you think this one may be mm. a, an ideal women's candidate? Mm, mm. So, so VAC first and foremost is an opportunity for you to get to experience the firm, right? Mm. You get to experience the people, the culture, all of that kind of stuff. But it's also an opportunity for us to experience you mm. before you get kind of quite far in your, in your um, qualification. Mm. So, the type of people we're looking for, we understand when you come to VAC, you don't know too much law, right? Mm -hmm. So when you come to VAC and you're in your second year LLB, what we're looking for is mm -hmm. someone that is passionate about being here, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. knows about Bowman's, mm -hmm. right? So you don't want to come here and you don't know anything and yeah. you're asking questions that you could have researched before you came. Website, right? Think, yeah. Got like a website mm -hmm. and then after that, you, you come here knowing a bit about the firm because that way when you start engaging with people, you're able to start engaging from a point of knowing something, mm, right? Mm, mm. Uh, but also when you get an opportunity to do VAC work, what we look for in the week that you are here, be a sociable person, right? Mm. So you don't want to come to VAC and be the person that's always sitting in the corner, sitting by themselves, mm. someone that's not engaging, someone that's not asking questions. When there's mm. opportunities to ask questions, ask questions, mm. you know, be curious about about being here, be curious about learning more about the firm because that is your actual opportunity to yeah. learn about the firm in person. Yeah. Um, and because VAC is such an important, like we get hundreds of applications, right, for VAC and we only take like 35, yeah. 40 at any given point in time. Mm. So if you score an opportunity to do VAC, mm. like that is your one chance to really dig in as much as possible in yeah. any way possible. So someone that is curious, someone that's well researched, someone that is a team player, mm. there's lots of group activities, mm. you know, you need to enjoy working in teams as well. Um, but just show a bit of your personality, be confident when you are here, engage mm. with people, speak to people, that for us is attractive. Because we already know the fact that you're here means academically, Usha. Usha, yeah. we've yeah. seen something yeah. in your CV that we like, so now it's about meeting you in person, yeah. so you need to show up, you can't kind of come here and be... Mm shy to to be here and that's like that's that's the one thing that like, I, I find a little bit tricky to mm. kind of balance because let's say you are 
a shy person, you're an introvert, mm. you're not used to, you know, being out mm. there. Mm. Mm. And I think for now, that's in my first back program, Rose, I experienced that. I was, mm. I'm not a shy person, mm. but because it was my first program, and there were, there were like third, fourth year students that were just like throwing the questions. Mm. I was like, let me just sit back mm. and just watch. Mm. And no wonder it didn't work out because like, I don't even think I was in, ever in the room. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And when I did my VAC program here at Bowman's, I was like, I never, I am going to take this opportunity. If, oh. And then I think there's a balance also in that you don't want to be too much as well, but also you don't want to be like that person in the corner. And how do you balance that? It's about striking the right balance, right? And it's, yeah. about, it's about being self-aware. Mm. <laughs> you so. always say that. She always says that. <laughs> it's such an important thing because yeah. no one teaches you how to be self-aware, right? That's and you true. don't learn it at varsity. Yeah. So it's about reading the room and understanding when is a good time to come in? When is a good time to speak up? Mm. When is it okay to just keep quiet and let other people speak? Yeah. So you're right. It's not about being out there. We're not looking for extroverts, yeah. right? We yeah. look for a range of people mm. but if you're quiet and that one time you ask a question it's actually a well thought out question mm. and it's something that's actually meaningful and not to say you have to now have these very sophisticated questions <laughs> yeah because i know how people are like oh, i don't want to ask a stupid question yes. and whatever <laughs> but but it is about take that opportunity there's people mm. that have come to VAC that have done really well academically mm. but they've been so quiet like we just like it's as if you never came mm. right mm. so if you if you're uncomfortable to speak up in groups mm. on the side speak to people okay engage with okay. people because that's another way that we also find and get that additional information from other people oh you know i spent some time with cd at the mm. cocktail function She's really smart and she really seems like she's keen to be here. In, 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 mm. in. So you don't have to speak up in a group. Okay. But when there's opportunities okay. to grab one or two people, then go Definitely. there, speak, engage. Yeah. Okay. Show okay. up in that way. No, okay. No, that, 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 that's Makes it. Sense. Yeah, this balance thing, guys, is, it's tough. Because <laughs> as much as you don't want to be that person that's here, yeah. you know, you want to be able to be somewhere in the middle. And I think it's so important, especially to go back, because... It, like there's so many events where you're interacting with partners and senior associates mm. and, and, and other people mm. in the firm, you know. Mm. And like for example, cocktail function, mm. you can't just be there with the other VAC students. You need to be able to be seen. Okay, okay this person is going to partners, wabua, you know, engaging. Mm. Get, mm. You know, mm. hey, so guys, you heard it. You heard it from mm. from the, from the master of <laughs> recruitment. So don't say I never bring the content to you. And then. Okay, the other question that is really always, and I, I don't know how to answer this one. I always say, I, I don't know. Because mm. I did my interviews when 2015, oh, I think. And people ask, what kind of questions can you expect in an interview? Mm. Whether it's a back interview, whether it's a, it's a, someone wants to be a candidate attorney, whatever. And I'm just like, I remember my experience, right? Mm. And my experience wasn't a bad experience. But I can understand people can have different experiences and different questions and so what are those questions that that are likely to be asked to every single applicant that you should kind of be expecting when you come for an interview mm, so so the purpose of an interview is to get to know you right we've seen ah, we've seen guys, <laughs> we've seen your cv yeah and we've read your cv there's yeah. something in your cv that said hmm let's call this person for an interview mm, no? mm. so the one question you know you're bound to be asked at some point is... I know it's coming. Tell oh, me yeah. about yourself. There we go. I hate that question. Ah! I'm just like... And it's the easiest question to answer. No. It is. If you've prepared, it's a very easy question. What do you answer. say? Do you say, I'm from this place? Do you say, I studied this? Because now you know what I've studied. You yes. know my transcript. Yes. So what do you... Like when you say, tell me about yourself, do I say my personal things? Or yes. do I say that I'm a... What do you say? Like, what do you say? So, 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 so. Don't talk through your CV. We've seen it. Okay. Yes. Ne? Yes. But the reason we ask you, you must always remember, when we see a CV, we know what's on the CV. That's why we've called you for an interview. Mm. But now we need to meet you in person. We can't hire you off the back of a CV, yes, right? Yes. So by yes. meeting you in person, we're trying to see what are your interpersonal skills? Mm. How confident are you? How prepared are you for an interview? Have you done your research? Mm. Are you able to articulate to us who you are, why you are here? Mm. That's why it takes so much preparation when you get an interview, right? Mm. When you come for an interview, you prepare. You don't just pitch up and like... I'll get get yeah. like I'll wing the questions that get sent mm. to me. So 
tell me about yourself is really generally the opening question because we want to get to know you. We want to see your personality. Mm. We want to see if you're the kind of person mm. that would do well here. Hmm. Right? At okay. the firm. So a very easy way of thinking about how to answer the question, tell me about yourself, mm. is to firstly think about it in three different categories, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Thinking about present, past, future. Okay. Ne? Okay. So okay. bucket it in that way. And so you start with present. Yeah. Right? So you mm. speak about, hey, my name is Bufale. Um, you know, I attend university at this particular university. I'm currently studying my BA undergrad mm. um, and will be doing my LLB in time. Mm. Uh, really enjoying my time at university. These are some of the things that I've been doing okay. as extracurricular activities. These are also some of the achievements. You know, I've been on the dean's list or I've been on whatever achievements you've also kind yeah. of spoken. You speak about what you are doing currently. Now, no? okay, yes. And then... You go to past. Okay. But the reason you speak about past is to inform present. Okay. Ne? So why don't you start with past? You can. Okay. So it's okay. not a, it's not a science. I'm giving you a way to package it, and I'm trying to explain how it would work if you started present and okay. you went into past. So okay. if you go into past, then you kind of can say. So the reason why I've decided to study law, I think you've told us you're studying law now. Okay. Yes. Yes. The reason yes, why yes. I've decided to study law is because you know growing up. I was exposed to this and this and this and mm. this and you know that really motivated me to want to become a lawyer because this is in effect the type of things that I want to do mm. as a living because da 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 or growing up I used to watch this particular series and I really loved how mm. you know as a law person you have to interrogate so many different things and you need to mm. be the kind of person who's inquisitive who comes up with solutions and da da da, da. And so when you speak about past, you're not just taking them through your upbringing and, mm. you know, and all of these things. Whatever you speak about in your past needs to relate to who you are now. Okay. okay. Right? Okay. And why you are there. Remember, you're always packaging your answer to, to a recruiter for the company that you want to work for. Mm. Mm. So you know what they're looking for. Always mm. package it to address why you're a lawyer, mm. why you are there. Mm. But also it's nice to, to get to know a little bit about you in the sense of if, you know, if you're the oldest, you know, in your family or whatever, mm. saying, you know what, I grew up, I'm the oldest of seven, mm. or I'm the oldest of five, it's really helped me to, to build skills of being responsible. Da, da, da. Mm. So when you start speaking about your skills, you know skills that we are looking for. Yes. You know skills that are going to help you land the job, right? Okay. So you don't just speak about, like, random things. Whatever you speak about, let it be relevant for the, the interview. interview. Okay, yes, yeah. yes. And then, ufelezaka future yeah right mm. the reason why i'd love to land a job here at mm. bowman's and why i see myself as a future attorney at bowman's is because bowman's is this 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 mm. this, this the reputation you speak about the types of work that we do we you speak about you know so i'm so giving you, you examples no, of what you, you can speak about but yeah. you speak about futures and this is what i plan to do this is why i want to start my career at bowman's um, mm. And this is the type of attorney I want to be. And mm. I've read up about so and so and so and so who's heading up these departments, and they're really so inspirational. And I'm just giving you examples. You don't have to you, do. You know what I'm getting from this? Tell me. Do your research. Don't it's just come. The number one thing. Don't just be like, oh, can I interview for moments? I'm coming. Hey, hey. No. Because now, <laughs> you guys. I'm just saying those are the those are the most impressive ways to start, yeah. and especially because that's tech. Generally, the first question that you get asked, mm. ah, you're already like halfway through for me. I'm just like, I like. She, she won. I like. <laughs> Anything yes. else that comes, you really need to then botch it up later for yes. it to be like a... But if you start like that and you show a sequence of why you're doing what you're doing, yeah. where it comes from, you know, why you want to be here, ah, uh, number one. Guys... If, if there's anything that you get from this video, like any, if there's anything, is that when you get an interview, do your research. Number that, one. That's your. Number I, one. I really wish I knew the stuff. Like, if my, if my third year of first <laughs> I think I would have gotten inside in all the big five firms. Like, come, come, come. But anyway, I got inside at the best one, so it's fine. Doesn't that, matter. That's all that matters. That doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> doesn't matter. And then, in terms of um, where Bowman's. Recruits. Mm. I know uh, there's this perception that uh, big five firms only recruit in like COVID, mm. UCT, mm. UKZN, mm. UP. Mm. 
But I know that there are people here that come from University of Limbaugh. So, it's, it's, so I, I know that that's not true, mm. right? Mm. And I think the question is, I want people to be reassured. Mm. Where, where, do you, where do you actually recruit when you say you're looking for candidates? So, so we go to at least 10 universities mm -hmm. across all of SA from Eastern Cape, Western Cape, Joburg. Like, we go everywhere, mm -hmm. literally. Um, so applications are open to anyone, doesn't matter what university you're from. Mm. But if you're a top student, so if you meet the criteria, mm. right, from mm. the university that you're from, mm. um, and you make it here, the floor is for you to mm. take the opportunity, mm. right? Yeah. So, so anyone can apply. We get people from all over. We've taken UNISA students. We currently have a really? student that's starting this year. Oh. Um, so, or UK Z, everywhere. Like, we take, Guys, if you make it through a selection day, you make it through a selection day, irrespective of the university you come okay. from. Okay. Well, that's good. I think that's very reassuring because yeah. a lot of people are, and I never know how to say, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I know that there's a couple of people from Limbs. I know a couple of people from, like, as you say, Forte, but I didn't know that you recruit from UNISA as well. We do. I didn't we know do. That. We've got about three people that joined in all in one year from UNISA. Oh, guys! So, <laughs> what I'm saying is that <laughs> I'm hooking you up with the information. And then the other thing, Osbukali, is, is the idea that everybody thinks that and that's what I also think, that everybody that gets signed at a big five or even Bowman's is a top student mm. for university. Mm -hmm. Like, do you, do you consider, like, every she, like... Let's go on, go on. You want to work for a top... <laughs> are you looking to work at, a, at an average law firm or do you want to work at a top law firm? Top. Okay. So, it's reciprocal, right? Yeah. So... That's true. You can't be like, ah, but, you know, at least... 60% mm -hmm. the, the reality about academics is that it says more about you than just what your average is. It does? Let me unpack it. Okay. So if I see someone on a link an A average or a B average, mm -hmm. right? It mm -hmm. says one of three things to me. It says either the person is naturally smart, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is always good to have. Mm -hmm. Or it says the person really works hard mm -hmm. to get those kinds of marks, mm. right? The third thing is that this person is either really passionate about what they're doing. Okay. Because sometimes when you're passionate about something, you don't really necessarily work hard to get those marks. Mm. You love what you're doing, and so you easily kind of just, just engage just with the material. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So it says one of those three things to me. Mm. And any top law firm wants students who are smart, hardworking, passionate about what they're doing. Right? We don't want to bring, we don't want to bring uh, uh, or groom lawyers that are half-hearted about it, yeah. that are average about the, you know, the profession and, no, we want you to actually... You want the best, because we want to be at the best law firms. So we want to be at the best law yeah, firms, so now we want the best students. It must correlate. <laughs> it must correlate. So, so it's not about, uh, we only look at the top students. I mean, we, we've taken on students that have had 65% average, 70% mm. average. Mm. But then let's unpack what else they're doing. We'll never just mm. take a 65% average and that's all they do is mm. academics. Mm. Because also, if all you're doing is academics, best believe you, you should need be to getting, be an A, B student. Yeah, no, definitely. Because what else are you juggling? Yeah, that's true. Right? That's true, yeah. But if you're juggling a lot of things and we can mm. see one of the things that you are doing really add to who you are becoming as a lawyer. Mm. And then the 65% average, then we kind of like, okay, on balance of things. It makes sense. So it somewhat makes yeah, sense. Yeah. But you can't be no extracurricular just getting a 65 then because no. But then there's, there's that argument can be used for you can get people that are 80, 90% students that are doing 10 other things mm -hmm. and are still getting those masks. So it's like, ish. And that's what people don't see, that you're always comparing, we're always comparing you with other applicants. Mm, mm, so mm, so mm. one of the common questions I get asked around UNISA is that, no, but I'm a UNISA student, which means I'm working part-time, so you can't expect that I'm getting good marks, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm working. Yeah. No? Mm -hmm. But I can equally say to you, one of the people we've taken here mm -hmm. is working, is a mother of two, married, and got 85% average yeah. at UNISA. Exactly. So we see people like that. So when you come with that kind of argument, then it's like, well, it's, it's, I hear you, but... But also, it, it, it's, it's, I think people should 
the one thing that I'm learning from this is that just stop making excuses. Don't make excuses. Just just do, do your best and was I know put those masks that will get you into these firms because at least you know it's a it's a step in, you know, as opposed to saying you're getting sixty, then you still have to go motivate. You clever. So it's better just to my my advice is just get the max. <laughs> that, that's my advice. Levanga, <laughs> that guys, yeah. you must remember that there's that's there's hundreds thing. of you looking for for jobs at any given point yeah. in time, and so that's we're true. always stacking you up against others that are getting the eighties and nineties percents, yeah. and so we always go and gravitate towards those people first because we know that when they come here, ba mo kada lo. Right, yeah, yeah. but also to also yeah. say the inverse of that, we've had people who've come in with straight A's mm. and still not gotten articles. Yeah? yeah. So, so what we look for is not just academics. Academics definitely gets you in the door and mm. gets you an interview. Mm. But you also need to come here and show up and be the type of person we want to. What you're looking for? Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think the the second last question that I have. Yeah. Once a person has been through that process, you've you've done well in your interviews, you've you've got the you've got everything, and then you get signed, mm -hmm. and then you become a candidate too. <clears throat> I get it's not being a being a CA is not saying you're gonna be retained in mm. a firm. Mm. It's not guaranteed. Yes. How do you, as a as a as a as a CA that's coming into a big five firm, what, I don't want to is an advice. What advice do you give to someone that doesn't have let's say work experience has never worked and is coming into the space for the first time into, into a working environment, mm. what do you give to that person to say, this is the route or this is what you need to be doing to be able to get retained? Okay. So once you are here, mm. you don't now show because you've gotten in mm. to Bowman's, right? Mm. In order for you to get retained, it's, it's important for you to always be mindful of how you show up when you are in rotations mm -hmm. right and by mm -hmm. show up i mean what kind of person are you bringing to the office every single day mm -hmm. what is your attitude like mm -hmm. actually attitude i think for me goes such a long way mm -hmm. you could be the least smart person but the most hardworking and the most pleasant person to work for mm -hmm. and people will any day want to work with the most pleasant person who's hardworking, who's willing to learn mm. more than someone who's just naturally smart and thinks I don't have to mm. do as too much, much and yeah. whatever. Mm. So, so once you're here, it's so important. Your attitude that you approach your work with is absolutely important. Mm. You need to be someone who's excited about doing the work. Mm. You need to be someone who has a good attitude towards the work that mm. you do. Um, you need to be someone who's a team player, who's willing to learn, who's willing to take some criticism or constructive feedback because that's what's actually going to help you get better at what you are doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can't be here and kind of sit back and want to kind of disappear in the background. Mm -hmm. in the same way for VAC, when you come here and you disappear in the background, you're not going to be the person we're wanting to engage with. Mm -hmm. So. Your ability to work in teams is absolutely important, and that comes with a lot of things like communicating, mm. managing expectations. There's a lot, right, mm. that goes into mm. that. Mm. But attitude, I promise you, attitude is something that will take you very far mm. in this place. Mm. Okay, so final question. I think the wrap-up question is, what is the one thing that you wish all students knew before applying for articles? One thing I wish all students knew is the importance of your time spent at university. Why? Because that, so I've done grad recruitment now for over 10 years. Mm. And the difference between how you start your career is what you've done at the time you were in university, mm. Mm. right? Mm. University is almost the building block of how you start your career. Mm. People that work hard at university get good marks. Mm. do extracurricular activities that add to their skill set and, and who they become as a person. Those are the people that end up having two or three companies saying, we want you, mm. right? Mm. So you are allowing yourself an opportunity for choice, mm. depending on how you use your years at university. That's true. So if you kind of going through university and, mm. you know, I'm just aiming to pass, mm. You're going to be one of the people that are knocking on so many different doors, mm. applying to hundreds of different places, mm. hoping for that one opportunity mm. 
to to be called for an interview um and and how you use your time at university you almost set yourself up mm. and so i always try and advise students to say those four years or five years of school university, I know you want to have fun. Mm. I know it's exciting. Mm. I know that ability <laughs> that ability to decide whether you want to go to class or not yeah. and be in tutors, I mean, in tuts or not. Mm. It's exciting to have all of that freedom. But if you want to give yourself an opportunity to have choice mm. yeah. about where you start your career, mm. where you start your articles, like focus in that time. I'm not sure. saying don't. I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm saying have fun, but when it's time to work hard, work hard. I got. I had a mic. I wish I had a mic just to say, drops mic. Guys, like that. I wanna that. Yeah. If there's any advice, if, I, I think I've been saying that throughout the video. If there's any advice that you should <laughs> take from this video, <laughs> but no, I'm literally saying that again. This one is. I think that's the best advice. And I think you you are so right, Osbutale, because as much as like I was I was I was I was one of those students that was very balanced. Then mm. I didn't get that hero. Mm. I used to I used to go clubbing, mm. I used to do everything. Mm. But when it was time for work, I was like, no. Mm. That was that was mm. work, you mm. know. And I think it's so important because it literally what you do in university, whether kiddie, kiddie, you're joining clubs, you're joining societies, mm. all of those things, they really, they really make a difference. Mm. Don't be that student that's just like, I'm here for class, go home, done. Mm. You know, I think it's so important. And, I, and the other thing that I, that I really gain from universities is also co uh, creating connections mm. from other students. Mm. I know a student that's at Worksman's, another student that was at Norton Rose. Mm. And before you know it, you guys are even working on the same transaction. Mm. Because where did you meet? Koskolo, mm. mm. you know. So yo guys, like yo, I I really plugged you on this one. Hey yo, <laughs> thank you so much, Yo, this pleasure. was yo, this was very helpful. I will put up her details. So please, instead of DMing me, can you DM her <laughs> from now on? All your law related questions, I will put up her Instagram. You can DM her. You can do all the things. But really guys, this was a great interview and I really think that those that have been asking questions, wanting to know things like interview skills and CVs and cover letters, I really think that you are going to benefit so much from this interview. And yeah, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, <laughs>